And if you think, ugh, riding a roller coaster in a mask, having to wait a little bit longer just because it might be safer for people is lame, then, you know, go ahead and think that at home. Hey, I'm Morgan from the Very Unofficial Travel Guys, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you my tips to visiting a theme park when you gotta wear a mask. It is Thursday, June 4th, 2020, and as you know, most of the major theme parks in the world are not open yet. I think the German parks and the European parks are some of the first ones to start opening their doors again, and they've got a lot to think about in order to follow the guidelines and keep everybody as safe as possible, but also offer like a full-fledged theme park experience. And if you wanna visit a theme park like Fantasialand at this time of year, in this time of our lives with everything that's going on right now, there's a few things that you have to do differently. One of the changes that we all have to get used to happens even before you get to the park, and that is you must buy your ticket in advance. You cannot show up and buy a ticket at the gate. Each park has somewhat different purchase and cancellation policies, so make sure you inform yourself properly before buying those tickets. One major advantage to this is the parks just are not full. So buy a ticket in advance, and of course it is a limited number of tickets to control the amount of people in the park and to make sure that everybody can stay at the proper distance from each other and still have a good time. Does that mean that the lines are shorter? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. What I don't wanna discuss in this video is what the point in wearing a mask is. That's not what this video is about. But one interesting thing we learned over our short European road trip this weekend was that not every country has the same guidelines about wearing masks in public spaces. So before you go to your local park, or if you might be traveling internationally soon, make sure you get the information in advance so you can go prepared. These are the masks that I brought with and have been trying out uh, this one I bought from a local, like a local service that made it. And uh, I like this style, but just it's a little bit too small for me. So that's why I haven't been wearing it. Uh, these two I got printed with this uh, Mickey face on it. Don't sue me, Disney. I just made it for myself. I'm not selling them to anyone. And this one is like the least comfortable and fits the least... Uh, practical. I wouldn't recommend uh, this kind of mask at all and definitely not for coming to a park. This one is sort of like the surgical masks that you see with the folds here on the side and it has a uh, like a stiff wire in here that you can form around your nose and I've been hearing a lot of people say or you know reading a lot of people say that if you wear glasses these are the best kind because you can really like close it around your nose and another great thing about this one is you can adjust the tightness of it. Uh, but I found that on the really hardcore roller coasters that this one felt really loose and that I was having to hold it on my face. It's really lightweight and it's comfortable to wear just walking around, but it's just not good for the coasters. This is another mask that I have here. And it's kind of made out of like you know, almost like a sports bra material, I want to say. And this one is the one that fits me the best for riding coasters. Um, it ha you know, it keeps a little bit of its form on its own. It fits tightly to my face. It's just a good size for me. So as far as my experiences go, this is the kind that I would recommend wearing to a park. I definitely recommend trying out your mask before you spend a day at the park to make sure it fits you well and is comfortable. It's kind of like buying a new pair of shoes. Also, bring a few masks just in case. If you don't have a beard yet and you're thinking about maybe growing some facial hair before you go someplace where you have to wear a mask, my recommendation is to just wait <laughs> because uh, I, I don't wear this beard all the time, but for some reason I just decided to let it grow out again for the past few weeks. And now that I'm here and have had to wear a mask for several hours, I just realized that the, the facial hair grabs the mask. And when I talk, it, it always pulls it down. I'll show you what I mean. 
when I talk, it just, you know, it gets like stuck in here and then it slowly moves it down. And I'm assuming that if you have a smooth face, that that happens less. In the Netherlands, in comparison to Germany, there is not a requirement that you wear a mask when you are in public places. And the reason that is, well, there's two reasons that I can come up with. One is that uh, they have less than a hundred people in the entire country in the ICU now with an orb. That means the numbers here in this country are way, 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 way down. The other reason is, and this is something that is really nice to see, is that the citizens of this country, the visitors of this park, and we've heard uh, Dutch, German, and French being spoken, everybody is doing a really, really excellent job at staying away from each other, practicing social distancing, and they're doing it with the way they seat people on the trains too. The train that I was just on, on Troy, the wooden roller coaster back here, there was eight people in the train, in the entire train. Yeah, that's the way to keep people apart and keep people safer. Good job, Toverland. And if you think, ugh, riding a roller coaster in a mask, having to wait a little bit longer just because it might be safer for people is lame, then, you know, go ahead and think that at home. One thing that I was worried about was the lap bars and the restraints and everything. I thought, how many people are gonna be touching these? And that seemed like something that was gonna, I don't know, kind of freak me out and that I was gonna be trying to ride the rides without holding onto anything and just like sit here and, you know, be afraid of touching anything. But at least here at Fantasialand, one thing that I've seen is at the exit, to every ride, like almost literally on the exit platform, they have disinfection gel. So immediately after you get off the ride, it's like you can right there wash your hands, which I think is great. We did see the disinfection gel at Toverland as well. And another thing that we saw at both parks was them taking a break from loading to clean the trains. I can't tell you exactly how often they do it, but it was good to see that they do do it, even if it's not after every ride. As far as waiting in the lines or the queues, there are signs everywhere reminding people to keep the proper distance. There are dots on the ground. There are announcements that go through the entire park reminding people to wear a mask, keep distance, and don't smoke in the lines. Please always keep a distance of at least 1.5 meters to others and follow the smoking ban. Please also note in the entire waiting area and when using the attraction, a mouth and nose cover must be worn at all times. Thank you for your cooperation. This is one of the things that I think is going to end up being a really important deciding factor about if the parks can stay open is how well people follow the rules and stand on the dots and boxes. It's so easy, I don't understand why some people seem to have a problem with it. Standing closer to the person in front of you isn't going to get you on the ride any sooner. It's still the same amount of people who are between you and the ride. You know what I mean? It's a theme park, so people do get excited. And I've noticed, especially when you're exiting a ride, that is a time where it seems to be a little bit more difficult for people to remember to keep the proper distance. And also sometimes in the queue, we have noticed people standing a little bit close to us, behind us. And to tell you the truth, I have no problem with just turning around to somebody and asking them if they could take a step back or just letting them go ahead of me. So how do all these changes affect the overall experience? Let's start with the detractors. In my opinion, it did take a little while to get used to wearing the mask on the rides and while waiting in the lines. However, some nice things about it are, if it's a cold day like it was on our second day at Fantasialand, it helps keep you warm. Kind of an unexpected bonus. And to tell you the truth, after a while, having the mask on on the rides didn't even bother me at all. None of the three days that we were in the parks, it got over 70 degrees, so I don't know what it's like in the heat. You'll have to watch some other videos to find that out. Another thing that was just starting to bother me was the amount of sanitizer 
gel I was putting on my hands. Even though this was, I felt like it was some really high quality stuff that we were being given. After three days of it, it was starting to sort of bother my skin. And so if we're talking about like a week long Disney vacation, not sure what that would end up being like then for your hands. Another sort of detractor is I found myself getting annoyed about how other people were acting or let's say not acting like the people who were just walking right past the hand sanitizer or people who are not standing on the dots and not staying in the boxes. I just don't get it. If you want to go to a park, those are the things you have to do and none of them are difficult. And maybe another thing that was sort of a detractor is because the people are standing so far apart in the queues, if they're all doing it correctly, sometimes a small queue can look like it's really long, but there might only be a hundred people in front of you, which is, you know, that can go really quickly if they're running two or three trains on a ride. So that's kind of like a perception thing, you know, if you're going to a park that you've been to a lot, you can kind of judge how long a wait is gonna be by looking at how far the line goes through the queue. But that's not possible now because the amount of people in the queue up until those points is totally different. It's just a minor thing, but I thought I'd mention it. Another thing that I can imagine becoming a detractor, which we didn't have any problem is, because of the limited amount of tickets available every day, I could imagine that eventually some people are going to have to change their plans because they can't get tickets for the day they wanted to go. Another detractor is, at least in the parks that we visited, and the news I've been seeing from other parks is at the moment, there's no live entertainment. So character greetings, stage shows where you're sitting in an indoor theater, they just don't exist at the moment. And that's kind of a bummer. Also, if your favorite ride involves putting something on your face that can't be washed, like virtual reality glasses, I'm not talking about like plastic 3D glasses, I'm talking about, you know, those VR headsets, that's not gonna happen now either. I was assuming we weren't gonna be able to ride the interactive dark rides where you shoot things, but Fantasia Land has a really fantastic one of those, and it was open, and the way that they do it is you are required to sanitize your hands before you get on the ride. There is a ride attendant standing there, stopping the line and watching every person pump gel onto their hands before they board the ride. So I guess that's how they make sure that the things you have to touch stay clean, and I'm sure that they're spraying them down after every however many passengers go on the ride. Of course, nobody is surprised that the buffet restaurants aren't open, but there were some other modifications that I just didn't expect or wasn't thinking about. For instance, if you go to a table service restaurant, they're gonna give you a different kind of menu because the menus have to be disinfected after every person touches them, apparently. And there'll be a difference about how the servers bring the food to the table and present it on the table. And like, if you order a bottle of wine, they can't pour it for you, things like that. Another thing I found interesting and I don't quite understand is the bars in the Fantasialand hotels were not serving any cocktails. And the explanation that I got from one of the bartenders was it requires too many interactions with the ingredients, but I don't really get that one. What do you guys think? All right, let's move on to the positive things. And of course the most obvious is the limited amount of tickets available means that the park is less crowded. And we were in the parks on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in June, and almost every attraction was a walk-on. I think the longest we waited for anything was maybe 20 minutes. And now I know this could change. I have no information about how many of the available tickets were sold on the days that we were there. And as the summer moves on, maybe things could be different. But at the moment, I really enjoyed the amount of people in the park and how it affected how many attractions we could ride in one day. I didn't wanna mention the cleaning of the trains as a thing that makes the lines take a little bit longer. Of course, it does make the wait a little bit longer, but every time I saw them doing it, I just was happy that they were doing it, so I'm not gonna complain about it. And maybe the most obvious thing that we should be happy about or the good thing about all this is just that we can have these experiences again. And I hope that we can continue to have them and that people stay healthy, follow the guidelines and have a good time. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what parks you visited in mask season or if you're just deciding to wait, which I can completely understand. Give me a thumbs up by pressing it below the video. 
if this video helped you out and I hope to see you here soon. Bye-bye.